are Jennifer Galuli Cookman and Stephen Olson, both visual artists. Thank you very much for being here today. Um, my first question is what exactly is a visual artist? What defines a visual artist as opposed to saying a painter is a painter and a photographer is a photographer? A visual artist does it encompass more things? Does it is it a specific definition? Those things aren't uh, exclusive from, okay. they're part of. If you're a visual artist, you might be a painter, you might be a sculptor, you might be a ceramicist, you might even be a performance artist, which is a, a completely different animal, which is not something I've ever done. Well, you? For, for me, it's just my go-to word because I don't know what I am or what I would call it. Okay. So I just say visual artist because I, uh, the, the things that I do are the things that I want to do in the moment. So okay. I don't mm -hmm. define, wouldn't define myself as a painter or as no, a sculptor either. or any of those things, mm -hmm. but sometimes I paint and sometimes I sculpt. Right. We work in multiple mediums. Exactly. Okay. So right. it's, it's a visual artist is basically an, uh, an umbrella term. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. And talk, talking about um, just doing what you do at the moment or whatever, what inspires your mm. work? What inspires all of this wonderful creativity? Is there any specific thing or is it, you know, the sun shining today, I'm going to take a picture and make art? It, it varies greatly, I think. Um, it kind of depends on, for me, it's always been cheaper than therapy. It's one of those <laughs> things. It's, uh, art has been one of my go-to things when if there's something, a problem I'm trying to work through, pain that I'm experiencing, uh, it's always been a very powerful vehicle for mm -hmm. uh, you know, having some kind of catharsis about something and being able to move forward. After you take something that's happened to you and put it into some kind of a physical form, it's much easier to kind of walk away from it after that. It's it's a it's a really nice way to process something, uh, and then move move past it. I would say uh, I w would agree. I, I think there's two different inspirations for me. Sometimes in in the moment when I'm working on something, I'm not aware that I'm working through something. Right. But then when I look at it at the end, I Often. say, oh, oh, that's what that was. Right. Or looking back at it, and I know for myself, I'm I'm. I would categorize myself as a very shy artist. Mm -hmm. I have been creating works, gosh, forever, but uh, for about eight years I created it and then put it in a drawer. Like right. I didn't want to show anybody because mm -hmm. it was showing me. And I still am very, very reluctant often to show my art because because of that piece, that, that it's therapeutic piece. It's very personal. Piece. It's, yes. it's almost like you're putting yourself up on a stage. You're, you're yes. very exposed and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, to, there are some artwork that I've, I don't show people. Most of it, I, 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 you know, I've never had a problem. I'm not shy. Um, no, I'm not shy. No, <laughs> no, no very much, shy. But, it, but it varies. There are certain, there are yes. certain things that are not for public consumption. Yes, but there are other times, though, for me that <laughs> I will see something. It could be in the Home Depot or it could be a rock. Mm -hmm. uh, both examples are true. Uh, right. Where I see something and I and it's just like the ethereal Cal light goes, oh, <laughs> and I have to take that, I have to touch mm -hmm. it, and I have to do something with it, and it right. takes over, it takes me over from that moment until it's done. The right, so right. So with your personal pieces, with the pieces that you're not going to show or you feel that you don't want to show people, do you think it's something that you show down the line, or is it just something you keep as, as almost like an art diary of where you were at that point in your life, and you look at that, and nobody else needs to see that. You did that for you. I think it would depend. Yeah. You know. I, I think after a while I'll sh show it. Mm -hmm. um, what I think is interesting is I, I just recently started showing more mm -hmm. and submitting to art shows, mm -hmm. and some a few have been purchased. And one person bought a piece that for me was created at a time that I felt very caged. I felt very um, stifled as a as a, a human as everything. And the person who bought it said. She didn't know why she was attracted to it, and I explained a little about what I was the going situation. through at the time, and she was saying, um, that's where I'm at right now. And right. It was really weird. There that are things I, that you communicate on a subconscious level yes. that, you don't, that you don't even realize you're doing. And like you said, sometimes you start working, you're, you're drawn, I'm often drawn by materials. Yeah. I collect things, my husband makes me nuts. <laughs> but then occasionally I look through, I'll look through and then something will grab me and I start, it's, it's this obsessive, yes. uh, hyper-focused state yes. of mind. And then you can't, you, your poor children, you can't, you you can't focus on anything else until it's yes. done. And then once it's done, though, is a sense of relief, and you look at it, and yeah. sometimes it takes a while before you figure out I think out it's good about. for the kids, though. I mean, yeah, they I watch so. me sometimes with their mouth open, like, what are you doing? Right. Dad, dad, Mine dad, too. and I go, I'm busy. <laughs> and I just do right. and then they end up <laughs> Not just, now, mommy's creating art. <laughs> right, but they, but they end up doing something similar next to me, usually, right. is yep. what ends my up my daughter, too. So. My son actually just did his first self-portrait the yeah. other day. My, there's a couple pieces of my kids. So up. you have 
four kids. I do, I have four. Yeah. I have two. two. Children. Do they inspire your work? Absolutely. One, one of the pieces here specifically, mm -hmm. it's called Frozen. Okay. Um, I took my children um, down to Mills Pond in East mm -hmm. Providence, and it's right off the road, but you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, and I just spent uh, 45 minutes just taking photographs, um, and then, you know, processed them and held on to them. And ended up finding in a little antique store these dolls that were made uh, in Germany in the 1920s. Uh, and just these perfect little children. And I had these, uh, this paint, I made them look like little statues and put them in a space and mm -hmm. juxtaposed it against the photographs. And the idea is sometimes you just want to take a moment and freeze it in time. Um, so there, 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 are, there are very specific pieces that are related to my children. Okay. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I, I my my children bring me to a, a place of um, almost serenity, even though they make me crazy. Right. So I don't often <laughs> create <laughs> art. Yeah. yeah, I don't often create art based on my feelings toward them. But and one of the piece that is actually there mm -hmm. that I brought um, to show that the size when I do show them, they're usually that big or larger. Um, that is my son, right? And the that piece mm -hmm. and. Uh, I pretty much told him what to do and how to do it and what I w had in my head and then he just right. did it. So I'll use them in my art. Uh -huh. Or I, I use their toys sometimes. I like do that Legos too. and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I steal and they get all mad. I do that too. <laughs> <laughs> that's, okay, that's interesting. Well, that brings me to my next question. You use toys. Is, is there, in your art, is there any one particular medium that you prefer over the other? Right now I have one that I prefer, spray paint. I'm obsessed really? with spray paint. Yeah, yes. and it, that's spray the same thing, paint. like you wax and wane. It's, yes. it's like not overall, but at the moment. Well, okay, so, so at, at the moment, moment, spray paint. Spray paint's my thing. Nice. <laughs> I'm loving spray paint. Okay, and, and for you, Jen? Uh, you for me, it's whatever is most accessible. Like, you know, we're talking about the, the having children, it makes it very <clears throat> difficult to sit yes. and to have those kinds of sessions to, to get your work of art the way you'd like mm -hmm. to. This assemblage work that I've been doing, um, it, it's kind of an easy thing to put piece together. I can do it in stages. So mm -hmm. it's because it's so accessible. And I do a lot of photo editing, mm -hmm. creative Photoshop kinds of things too, just because that's something I can tolerate doing at the end of the day. Yes. It helps relax me. Um, after the kids have gone to bed, I can sit there and I can, I can manipulate photographs. Uh, and so it, it just depends on what, what's available and what I have access to. When you guys first started uh, doing art, um, Lord knows how long ago. <laughs> when you guys first started doing My it. My finger paint? <laughs> like finger paint. Um, but when you first realized that you, this is what you wanted to do, produce art and yes. everything, is that, was that medium different than the medium you're working in now? Of course. Did you, did you oh, yes. see yourself down the line working this way? Has, no. has How much of it has changed? Everything. Really? Everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, like you said, literally, you said finger paints. That's not really a joke. It's, <laughs> it's, it's uh, Picasso said all children, everyone's born in artists. Mm -hmm. um, it's just uh, most people grow out of it. You know, we just never grew out of it. Yeah, um, I agree with that. You know, we, we ended up following a path and we're probably encouraged by people in our lives that were positive role models that told us that this wasn't a waste of time. And unfortunately, lots of kids hear that message early on that mm -hmm. this, this is a waste of time. You should be focusing right. on other things. Right. So I think that I would digress from that. I agree 100% what you said. But I, for me, I had to do it because I was told it was a waste of time. My family's, uh, mm. I'm first generation American. My family, um, mom's from Italy. And they were like, oh. you become an accountant or you become a doctor. And I said, I want to be a singer. I want to be an artist. And they're like, oh, no, no. I'm not paying for your education if you're doing that. Oh. So uh, I never took art classes. I've never I'm surprised done because any of that. I got a chance to live in Italy for a short while and uh, I went over there to learn how to carve marble. Yeah. And I tell oh, people wow. it's That's funny cool. because people would ask me what I did and I'm like, "Oh, I'm an artist." And the only way I can compare the reaction is people be like, oh, "It's like you're a doctor." Like it's the yeah. same kind of thing. Like people had so much more respect for the arts and artists right, in general like, I felt there, yeah. but is it from the immigrant parent point of view? Well, yeah, they were in the, the hills and the little Oh, <laughs> you know, gotcha. it's, it's different. They Understood. like yeah, they went through famine and war and all that. It right. wasn't Rome, Italy. Right. Okay, that brings me to another question. With my last guests, who were both actors in Rhode Island, they uh, basically brought up the point that um, anyone seen from outside of Rhode Island, from New York or Los Angeles, was taken as a little more seriously of being an actor, of being a performer, a performer, and um, almost they almost went to the heads of the line when it came to auditions or being cast in a show. Do you find that there's any difference being from Rhode Island, being an artist, as opposed to an outsider? coming in from, say, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and doing out here, are they taken any more seriously? Do you think there's a different approach? Have you come across that at all? Um, I don't think it's the same animal. We're both educators, mm -hmm. so we do art because it's what we need to do. It's not, it's not necessarily a profession, yeah. although I happen to be an art teacher. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's, it's not the same kind of thing. Maybe if I was a professional artist full time, mm -hmm. I would see that if I was competing with people for gallery space, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily something I'm exposed to. Right, I would have a difficult time answering that as well because I'm not, I don't even know how to break into the art world. You know, if there's an open call for artists, I'll put right, something same in, thing. but I don't yeah. know. Keeps, keeps you sharp. I think you get an agent or something, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I just do it because I want to, not because I want people to buy you, it. But <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Well, do you find that you know, producing art, even on your, what you're trying to say is limited, but it clearly it's not, you guys produce quite a bit, uh, do you find that there are any limitations to producing it here in Rhode Island? Uh, not as much access to the, the materials or so forth, or the materials more expensive? Yeah. I think or? we're really lucky. We have Rhode Island School of Design in our backyard. Yes. Yeah. I think it's it's a great artist community. Mm -hmm. um, I, and people that I know that do work here full time as artists say they feel they have a lot of support. Um, you know, it, everybody's feeling a crunch right now, but despite that, there are still um, organizations like Rhode Island State Council for the Arts that does an amazing job supporting full-time artists in our state. I agree. I think that, I feel Rhode Island is a bit burgeoning as well. It's, it's, right. it's, a, it's welcoming in, in terms of, I know other artists and through my, more through my education work, mm -hmm. I know a lot of artists around or just like meeting you randomly and, and, and you're an artist and I think in places like New York and such it, it's probably more difficult to get to know folks and it's not as as welcoming. Mm -hmm. uh, the best thing about Rhode Island is that it's small and people know each other and the worst thing about Rhode Island is, is it that it's small, small and people know each other. other you know <laughs> that's the thing but I like it. Mm -hmm. I think that it probably um, outside of Rhode Island if I go if people go somewhere and say, I'm from Rhode Island, it's not looked upon negatively, okay. I don't think. Or they um, think we're from New York. Yeah. Long Island? <laughs> yeah.